We'd like to invite uh, Trish Baker up this morning for our missions minute. Trish is from InterVarsity Fellowship, and she was one of the ministries that Knox supports. And we'd like to hear a little bit of a report from her. So thank you for joining us today, Trish. Oh, happy to do that. Yeah, while we're sharing memories, <laughs> I remember one time my son shot a paper airplane out of the balcony from this church <laughs> before I could nab him. So that was one thing that popped into my mind uh, when, when you were talking about looking out and seeing things. Um, two ushers dashed up the stairs, but they realized I already had like nabbed the culprit, so everything was well. Um, <laughs> it's good to be back here. I really, uh, really appreciate the invitation, and I am very glad to come and talk different times uh, about what I'm doing. Many of you know that I've worked for InterVarsity since the dinosaurs roamed the campus. And something new has been going on in the past few years. Um, I had been working with graduate students particularly, and the folks uh, that work, um, the regional director said, would you like to try working with faculty? So I thought about it and started writing a list of faculty that I knew I could call and they would probably say yes if I wanted to meet with them. And it was just like after all those years on campus, I just knew a lot of people on several campuses um, just because, you know, I'm in the community. And then some were even former students or my friends that had become professors or my friend's husbands or wives. And so I said, sure, I, I'll give it a try. And I met with the uh, faculty for quite a while and discovered I really, really loved it. Um, part of what I like is that faculty are at a different stage in life, so they're asking a whole different set of questions. And they were questions I felt really ready to help them with uh, because they were trying to deal with how do I live my faith in this university setting where lots of responsibility is expected of me? How do I treat my students? What difference does my faith make in my student, how I treat my students and my fellow staff? How do I react to um, the fact that the university may not see my Christianity positively and the church may not really understand what I do in my work and sometimes not even value it? And how do I share my faith um, in a way that's really appropriate? Because, you know, if you're in charge of several grad students, you have to be really careful not to favor someone who, you know, shares your attitudes. You have to be fair and you have to be seen as fair. And also with colleagues. Um, so all of those things, plus, you know, just dealing with the faith questions we have, you know, as things happen in life and you wonder why this happened or what should I do now? So I said yes. And um, we developed a group that met um, from several different campuses, because um, I just happen to know people from different campuses. It's not huge. I would say it's a total of 18 to 16 people that come at one time or another. Um, but they really love it. Um, and it's a time where the faculty can think together about how to be a Christian in the campus. And as you know, the campus is a very influential world, and professors are very influential people. So it's really valuable to have them th thinking about, you know, what does Jesus have to say about my work? So we had been meeting for about, I don't know, a year, year and a half, and COVID happened. And so all of a sudden, everything was changing. Um, I think the campus was affected in very unique ways because people didn't know, like, would students come back or not? Uh, would people work online? Would they work in person? Would they do both? And throughout the spring and the summer, the faculty were like, you know, revving up the engines to put everything online and figure out how to interact with students, how to um, how do you do office hours when you can't meet people in person and when you may have international students that are in different time zones because they didn't come back? Um, how do you grade papers? Uh, how do you proctor tests when somebody's sitting at a computer several hundred miles away? Um, how do you deal with um, the sense of isolation 
from not seeing people um, because most of the professors really want to teach and they love seeing pe people in person. And then what else is, what's going to happen? You know, you go to the grocery store and there's scarcity. Um, the things that all of us were facing, like will there always be scarcity? Um, fortunately, there wasn't, but those first couple of weeks we wondered who will get who will get sick? Um, will I get sick? Will my family get sick? All the same things the rest of us were dealing with. And so I, I thought, God, thank you so much that you helped us be up and running before this happened. Because it was a way that the members of the group could just come together on Zoom. And being professors, they were a little more comfortable with Zoom than many of us were at the beginning. Um, because they'd already done some things online. But we could come together on Zoom and they could talk through, you know, how do I live for Jesus here? How do I love my students? How do I care for the people in my department? How do I deal with the uncertainty of not knowing if I'll have a job, but right now I have three times as much work because I have to prepare for three different possibilities? Because they really weren't told, you know, like this, the professors at UB, during the summer, didn't know if they'd be in person or they'd be, you know, they, so they had to prepare for all three. Um, and it's been really exciting to see, you know, how they have worked through that. In the meantime, we've done lots of things about other, you know, other aspects of Christian life too, like how to deal with particular groups of students, you know, international students, um, students from different faith backgrounds, how to have spiritual conversations, and then also COVID in the mix. So, and, and uh, InterVarsity National has already also put on some special things that professors could invite their friends to. Um, for example, they had a what's called a Veritas Forum where it was online and they had a person who was a philosopher who had done a lot of work on death and how we view death now and how it was viewed through history and how the church has influenced how we see death and what's changing. And so people uh, met a few times online to talk to that. Uh, some of the professors from Buffalo were part of that and a couple of them, you know, they, it was something you could invite a friend to, uh, maybe that was interested in the subject but not necessarily a Christian. Um, there was another one that they've done in the wake of the George Floyd incidents on racism and the pain that it causes and the responses that we can make. So I am very thankful that God has given me this point in time to be with these people. I feel like it's a unique time in my life uh, when I have, when I'm kind of, it's a good match. Um, and I'm very thankful to you for giving me the time to be there. I'm currently part time, um, but I still, you know, am working for InterVarsity and I'm really thankful that you've helped me be there so that they can be there for each other and we can all seek God in how to be faithful to him during this, uh, this time of change and crisis, because you know at InterVarsity, they keep reminding us, God is doing something. What if God's doing something new? God is at work. Look for where God's at work. See what he's doing and take advantage of those opportunities. If you're interested in some of the things we talk about at the meetings, I have a list of some of the things we've covered. I can tell you afterwards. But I, again, I really thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this.